Natalie. And I'm Tony Martin, and welcome to our second episode, which, let's be honest, is an achievement in itself these days, yeah. and to the second part of our quest to put together the ultimate TV format. Yes, that's right, Tony. By the end of this series, we'll show you how to make something as good as Celebrity Dog School. Oh, <laughs> let's hope so. <laughs> but obviously, we want this show to be successful. Yep. So what's the one thing it has to have? Backwards talking dwarves. What's the other thing that oh. it has to have? Uh, cooking. Cooking. Yes. That's right. And let's be honest, cooking is, well, it's extremely boring, mm -hmm. I think, to, to watch and to do. Mm -hmm. I find it just uses up valuable time that I could be spending watching that cat playing the piano on YouTube. <laughs> but with a few tricks, it can make for great TV. Yes, Tone, tonight we'll be looking at some of the ways television turns cooking... Or rather, watching people prepare food that you are not going to eat... ...into TV gold. Now, we all know what the most successful cooking show on TV is. Ready, steady, cook. The other one. Oh. Because we're on Channel 9, uh, for copyright reasons, we can't actually use the name of that program here tonight, but we can call it by the name they use in Sweden. Sveriges <laughs> Mästerkort. Yeah. Hang on. Did, yeah. did they say Mastercock? Yeah, please. <laughs> Let's not laugh at that. This is a family program, yes. honestly. <laughs> Let's be mature. I prefer the one they have on Sweden's version of SBS, the Iron Cock that oh, comes that up. Is... Oh, come on! That... You sh please! They do surprise cock really well, which... Oh, oh for God's sake! That. Let's move on. Actually, can we see the logo for the show again? Have yes, a look. There they cock. are. Oh, OK. The familiar master cock rings and you that... can... <laughs> OK, I'm going to have to clear this no, building. That, you people. Please. Adults. Uh, hang on a sec. So, Tony, do they just use the same logo all over the world and only change the title? That's right. It's, it's franchised, and that's a big mistake, because MasterCock will get huge ratings in Australia. <laughs> but uh, the success of MasterChef... Sorry, we've used up our allowance of cock for this time Good. slot. <laughs> MasterChef and shows like it... I remember when this happened, it was all because of some kind of return to niceness. You remember oh, that? Yeah. The paper saying a return to niceness. And I get this, because when I was a kid, TV was like this. Nothing I've found is as sweet as that sound is The music that fattens the cat And then, at some point, it became this. No, oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I... 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 I should say that those hot-headed hookers have worked it out and they got joint custody of the trailer, which is lovely. <laughs> yes. They're both a beautifully choreographed tone, just a slightly different vibe, I think. But, you know? That's right. Suddenly, people wanted niceness back, which led to MasterChef. And nothing nasty ever really happens on MasterChef. No. Although, did you see that episode where someone actually got taken out into that courtyard and shot because there was an air bubble in a cupcake? Do you remember oh, yeah, that, that episode? Extreme. Yeah. And Matt Preston, I'm a huge fan of, of Matt Preston. I just love that a portly Oscar Oscar Wilde has become a mainstay of Australian <laughs> TV. A and he's nice, even when he pretends not to be. Matt takes a bite of my dish and he looks at me and he looks really angry. And I it's actually really scary. And quite frankly, that <laughs> is disgusting. Disgustingly good. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Yeah. He got me there. <laughs> I, I don't know. To me, it feels like they've made him do that. That doesn't feel like something that's coming naturally to him. That... No, he just wanted to get down and use those hand towels that he, <laughs> <laughs> right. that he advertises. It's acting. It is, it is. But I think that Matt does a great job of keeping up the tension. But if you're a nice show like MasterChef, how do you keep that fake drama and tension coming? Well, we all know the secret to these shows. It's the music. It's relentless. It seems to accompany even the simplest gesture. And it can make anything seem more exciting than it really is. And to prove that, Ed, why don't you see what's under that cloche? Under the what? It's a cloche. It's called a cloche. Oh, you just made that up. No, it is a cloche. It doesn't look like a It's got a little hat, a little metal hat. It's, it's a, a little cloche. Metal booby or Stop something. Stop wasting time. All right. As soon as I saw that glass of water, I thought, oh, no. There's your ingredient. Brought to us by our very good friend, The Tap. <laughs> He's been very cocky so far. What am I doing here? What's happening? <laughs> no, 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 no,
Tony saying cloche all the time had thrown me. Why do you keep cutting to me? <laughs> you sure you know what you're doing? Yes. You're against the clock. Well, yeah, I assume so, and yeah. this is your idea? Yeah, jug, water. You're going with pretty, this? Yeah. Yes, it's pretty simple. Okay. Okay. I knew I'd used too much water. That's got to be held against me. You promised us a traditional glass of water. What happened? I don't know. I just... I think it was the shots of Warwick. They threw me in the boys and didn't involve. I thought that I was sitting in front of the... Spanish Inquisition. They always say Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> that was... disgusting. Disgustingly horrible. <laughs> Why? Too watery. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, that has gone down a treat. I've got a huge offer in the food industry. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a zoot review. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. What a journey Thank you've you. been on, Ed. OK, <laughs> after the break, we'll be looking at... No, no, Ed, don't tell them. Tease them cooking show style. <laughs> we'll find out what happens after the break. <laughs> after the break. <laughs> Sets. I'm Tony, he's Ed, and tonight we're attempting to explain how cooking shows work. Yes, but before that, Tony, I think we need a... <laughs> yes, what? so... This... No, no, no. This? I am determined to keep people watching this show, so we yep. have to have something outrageous that's going to get people talking around the water cooler the next day. Well, like what? Well, like what they did on Home and Away, a Neighbours, a lesbian kiss. Yeah, but well, that's great, but what does it have to do with cooking? Absolutely nothing. Let's go. <laughs> Right. Spike achieved. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> we'll check the figures tomorrow. Back to cooking. Uh, we've already seen how shows like MasterChef can turn peeling a potato into five hours of primetime gold. But yeah. one show, Iron Chef, goes a step further. It makes cooking lunch seem slightly more important than D Day. Good. How? With a host who appears to have been driven mental by food, Mark Dacascos. These secret ingredients. Yes. <laughs> Shadow cheese! <laughs> Suckling pig! Hot dog! Beer! <laughs> That's beer. That's how I like to order a beer at the pub. <laughs> Try it yourself. <laughs> but that is another way to fake up the drama. In the kitchen with a de Cascos delivery. Tony, can I try one of those? Yeah, give it a burp. Okay. <laughs> Mayonnaise! <laughs> So we're agreed that okay. modern cooking shows have basically gone insane to be entertaining. Agreed. But it wasn't always that way. In the old days, cooking was still boring, but the way to make it interesting was by having demented presenters instead. <laughs> like Julia Child. We're roasting Miss Chicken today on The French Chef. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was only doing that voice so that Meryl Streep would have to copy it in the movie. <laughs> the French chef had no production values, just a camera and one person. But what a compelling person. Mm. Julia Child had actually been a secret agent during World War II. Watch how she deals with this lobster. When you put the lobsters in, you want to put them in head first. And that's because all of the lobsters' brains, hearts and feelings are right here in the head. And so... Plunging it in head first, upside down, they're immediately killed. <laughs> and then cover the pot, and if you do it now with just a makeshift cover, put a weight on it like that. And then you stop. I think that footage has been dropped. 
infected. I think something, Somehow. something's going on. If the lobsters are immediately killed, <laughs> why are you putting a weight on the top of the pot, Julia? <laughs> you know, Tony, if I was on that set, I'd just jump into the pot to get away from the voice. <laughs> now, America didn't have a monopoly on over-the-top chefs. Oh, no, the UK gave us Keith Floyd, who was all over TV in the 80s with material like this. I've got, uh, you know, the faggot king here, obviously. <laughs> Tony, that's not how I pictured the faggot king would look. OK, now, look, do not panic. Do not call. Apparently it means traditional British meatball made from pork. Or awful. Mmm. <laughs> now, with any other chef, you'd be sure they were using that word deliberately, but Keith Floyd is so bizarre, it's hard to tell if he knows what he's doing. You've got 30 seconds to explain to me all about faggots, all about black country cooking, right. without mentioning the word black country once. <laughs> right, so black country is the phrase he's concerned about. <laughs> Floyd was another one-man band. No fancy set or elaborate challenges. Just one man and his frequently expressed love of... Well, I think you know. And can you imagine you come home from a really hard day's work and find a room smelling of lovely hot faggots? <laughs> now, after the break, our mystery door guest and a cooking show guaranteed to make your arteries burst. Run, flick, now, you, well, you still got a chance. Get out. No, don't. Actually, don't. It's the only TV show that shows you how to make your own TV show, and this week it's cooking shows. Time for our mystery door. Or, as they would say on Iron Chef... Mystery door! Yes, and I only hope that whoever is behind that door knows something about cooking. Yes! It's Justine Schofield from the Australian version of Mastercock. Hello, Justine. Hello, Justine. Thanks, Justine. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Okay. Now, Ooh, nice place. Oh, nice place. We, we, we just coming up. The guys from the renovators have been in. <laughs> <laughs> They've cocked it up completely. <laughs> uh, Justine, I should say, obviously we all remember your journey on MasterChef. Mm -hmm. and uh, that's the key word, journey. Of that's course. right. We've said it a number of times already. And let's have a look at one of your memorable moments. Uh, then you go to your mousse, which you have to make a sabé on, you have to whip the cream, more chocolate. What was that? I was just completely tuned out then. <laughs> yes. Classic. Well, what happened there? <laughs> I completely tuned out. Fantastic. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the, oh, the chef did have a very monotone voice, so that's yeah. probably <laughs> the excuse. Um, look, so we've been cool. talking about TV and how it always uh, makes cooking feel more exciting than it actually is. Mm. How would you describe your own cooking style? Look, I think it's very classic French, a mm. little lighter touch. But also, you can't take yourself too seriously. I told him that. He See? didn't believe me. Yeah. You can't. No. <laughs> I like oh your gosh. cooking style, uh, Justine. But it's good. But do you know Paula's home cooking from America? Oh, I do. Paula <laughs> cooks food so bad for you that you actually gain weight just by watching her do it. <laughs> Untighten your belt and brace yourself for this. You know what would be delicious? If we cut this in half, put our lasagna on the bread, and had a lasagna sandwich. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, girl. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Oh, Paul. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Here's to us, Cheryl. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. She gets into it, too. <laughs> okay. Honestly. Oh, Justine, yeah. how good does that look? Oh, just so delicious. I'm way, just waiting for my heart attack to happen. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> just her hands scare me. Her hands are so... Ah, she, can't, she can't get her mouth over it, but she's yeah. going to get there in the end. So oh. are you, are you going to add that one to your repertoire? No. OK, good. No. Well, I think Paula gets away with it because her voice is so hypnotic. She could talk you into eating anything, even this. Is that our burger? We got our egg. We've got a couple of pieces of bacon. Here. You ready? Yes, have a taste. <clears throat> what does it taste like? You know, slice of heaven. I've never done this before, y'all, in my entire life. Hmm. <laughs> 
one. That's the ultimate, that, that one. That one is too far. Even Paula's friend looks like she thinks Paula's trying to give her instant diabetes. <laughs> She's not even <laughs> pretending. She's like, mm-hmm, it's yeah. delicious, <laughs> I think. All right, but before you judge Paula's methods, guys, I need you to understand that Paula is all about comfort food and spending quality time with her family. You know, I'm always constantly saying, rub your meat, yeah. rub your meat, rub your meat. <laughs> Justine, that is Paula with her son. With her son. <laughs> a rare piece of unintentional sexual innuendo. Oh, no, she means it, Tone, here. <laughs> you know, Justine, it's always awkward for parents to have that difficult rub-your-meat conversation <laughs> with their kids. I have to say, I couldn't cook that myself. And the stuff that you do on MasterChef or any cooking show, do you find it's, it's pretty hard? Oh, it's I, too, I find it intimidating. Too. What I want to see is a cooking show where it's something that I could do. Mm -hmm. And I think I found one that lowers the bar for everybody. My name is Susie Showman. I'm from South Carolina. Tell us about this concoction. It's just a bunch of cans of soup and throw them in the pot. So you opened up just a bunch of different cans of soup? That's or... correct. It's just, it's just, just not doesn't, appealing. It doesn't it. taste it. <laughs> it's not appealing. Oh, no. This is a great niche, a cooking show for the incompetent. Absolutely, and Susie's so proud to be able to open a can. I think her head would explode if she had to make lasagna sandwiches. <laughs> she looks almost shocked when they say, yeah. what do you mean, what's wrong with it? Two <laughs> cans of soup, come yeah. on. Now, I know that's pretty dodgy, but do you want to stick around for more, Justine? I'm going to stick around, that is hilarious. We've had a look at some ludicrous cooking shows, but we are going to show you the most stomach-churning show ever to make it to air. There's some sizzle. <laughs> stick around now. The Joy and Sets. I'm Tony. He's Ed. Justine from MasterChef is still with us, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And tonight we're all about what makes a cooking show work. And we're oh, going no, to. No, Tony, Tony, Tony. I've, I've got to interrupt you there. Look, this is the last segment of the show, and I, and I feel like we might be losing people, but it's okay because I've set up another. <laughs> Okay, now, it better have something to do with cooking because last time it was just two girls kissing. Look, and it I, felt I admit very... that, and I'm not proud of it. But this rating spike is different. It's on topic, it's all about chefs. <laughs> Necessary at this hour. You're right, Tony. I have just sent myself an outraged tweet. Good on you. As I was saying, tonight we're about what makes a cooking show work, but of course, some of them just don't. We barely touch the sides of what's out there, and it's time to look at one of the worst TV shows ever to make it to air with. Here's how the game works. Tony, Justine and I are going to read out three terrible ideas for a cooking show. One of them is real and actually made it to air. You just have to guess which one. And by you, we mean you. Ah. That's right. <laughs> I'm, told, I'm told that your name is Daniel. Would you like to take part? Yeah, sure. Right. Excellent work, Daniel. If you guess correctly, you will take home a magnificent prize from the Joy of Sets gift shop. Yes, and helping us out by gesturing towards the goodies tonight, would you please welcome an original prize model from Let's Make a Deal, the 70s Jimmy Hannon version, Miss Alana Orley. Beautiful, yes, and up for grabs tonight. It could be yours, the Young of the Restless cookbook. Every meal just the same as the one before it. Love Thy Neighbour, TV's most racist sitcom, beautifully remastered. A replica silver logie, actually worth more than the real thing. And Bert's Family Feud. The lawyers have told me not to do the joke, but I think you can guess what it would have been. Yeah. Some wonderful stuff in there. The pressure's on. Here we go. I'll start. Can't touch this. A competitive US cable TV cooking show where chefs have to prepare meals using everything except their hands. Mouths, elbows, thighs, legs and feet are allowed, but just not your hands. Or, Daniel, is it close to the bone? Top medical professionals, including urologists and brain surgeons, <laughs> cook delicious food using animal versions of the organs they operate on every day. <laughs> <laughs> or could it be Forbidden Fruit, a jackass-style Israeli internet prank cooking show? Blindfolded contestants are tricked into eating and reviewing food made from ingredients that their religion forbids them to eat. OK. <laughs> OK, Daniel, which one is the real show? Can't touch this. Let's have a look. 
Hi, welcome to Close to the Bone Surgeons and Chefs. I'm your host, Alan Shuchuk. And if you're the kind of person that needs a hand in the kitchen, today's show is tailor-made for you because we're going to be cooking some forelimbs. Our own Dr. Rick's going to see our meat man, Daryl, and grab us some great pig's trotters and veal shanks. And then our anatomist, Professor John, is going to explain that those parts of an animal are very much like our own human hands. Oh. Yes, the real program. Sorry, Daniel, it was close to the bone. It's very thorough. Professor John is going to explain how these parts of the animal are like human hands. Thank goodness, because otherwise I might not vomit. <laughs> So, sorry about that, Daniel. Well, you don't get the prize, but you do receive one of these. There you go. <laughs> one of Paula's <laughs> lasagna sandwiches. <laughs> okay. Hey, a big thank you to Justine Schofield, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Beautiful. And that is it from the Joy and Sets. Next week, we'll be looking at TV families, or as Mark Dacascos would say... Families! <laughs> And to take us out tonight, well, here's a treat. Our very own return to niceness. The Channel 9 dancers, well, they've not had a lot to do in recent years, Ed, <laughs> but under our end credits, uh, they will be... Tom, 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 we don't have any end credits. What? No, no, they just cut to the next show. Are you joking? Well... <laughs> OK, good night, everybody. Oh, you are fucking...